Hello, so this video is going to be all about why filters expire because there's still people out there that seem to think filters last absolutely forever so we're going to be looking into this in this video. Now what I'll do first is I'll try and tell you where I've got all these sources from but with some of them I might forget. So this first one is from the CDC which is the Center of Disease Control in America and you can see on here that they actually say even cartridges in original packaging have expiration dates that should be checked before purchase. So basically the center of disease control themselves are telling you that filters expire even if they're left in their packaging. And we'll go into a bit of info on that in a minute. Now this was from a US university's training thing for respirators, but if you notice at the bottom right, be sure to check the expiration date on gas vapor cartridges. So basically a university is saying for people doing research or whatever on site that they need to make sure their filter is in date before use. So again, this is another source that seems to be suggesting filters should be in date if you actually need to rely on them. This one is from the UK Health and Safety Board, uh, page 46 of 59 on their respiratory protective equipment at work, sort of PDF sort of info thing. And you'll know on here if you look that um, you have to change filters before any expiry date uh, marked on the filter and do not use a filter if the expiry date on the filter has passed. So basically they're saying, you know, to legally use a respirator for work in a UK business, you need to make sure the filters are in date. So again, more strong evidence that that's kind of a requirement. Now we have a bit from a Moldex brochure, which is a manufacturer of gas masks and respirators, but you'll notice in here that they say they seal the filters in an aluminum bag or aluminium bag for increased expiry date. Not an uh, infinite expiry date, but an increased expiry date. So, um, you know, properly sealing the filters increases how long they last, but doesn't make them last forever. Now this is where it's very important to note that in a filter you don't just have activated charcoal. That's like the primary ingredient of a vapour filter, but it's not the only thing. Vapour filters are impregnated, which means you put other metals and such in with the charcoal to actually make them better at absorbing certain gases, because charcoal itself can't absorb all the gases that the, you know, the filter might come into contact with. So when somebody says there's only activated charcoal in a filter, therefore it can't expire if sealed, um, they're totally ignoring the fact that there's several types of impregnations that can be done to a filter to make it work better. So basically, as you can see here, you only have pure activated carbon in a filter if it's being used against um, organic vapors only, which is like spray paint and gases and things like that. Once you have a filter that's designed for use against chemical weapons, it has to be impregnated or other industrial gases which means that obviously if it's impregnated, it's not just charcoal in the filter anymore that has its indefinite shelf life. Now we're going to have a very good look at an in-depth military uh, book from America. You can see the actual thing on the front if you want to look this up yourself. Now what they say in here again is about impregnation of filters. So there's a very long read bit you know, written here that I'm not going to read for you out loud, but you can read the document yourself if you want. And this is saying all the different chemicals that the US military has tried impregnating into filters for different types of protection. So, you know, obviously some of the things being impregnated into the filter will have expiry dates because it's not just charcoal. There are other sort of chemicals and metals impregnated into the charcoal which then have an effect themselves. So, obviously, if one of those things expires, even if the charcoal is still alright in the filter, you're not going to be protected from that gas or vapour that the impregnation was designed to protect from anymore. So that's obviously a thing you need to bear in mind. But as I've said many times before, if a filter is really well sealed, it is going to last much longer than the manufacturer's sort of very cautious short date. As I said before with lots of these things, there's lots of safety rules that to definitely protect the person using the filter in an industrial job or whatever where somebody might be sued over this. Uh, the filters are given shorter expiry dates than they really need and that's just to cover it, just like lots of food. You can buy food from a store that has a use-by date that's you know quite a long time before the food would actually go off or go rancid, and that's simply because it's the you know manufacturer covering themselves, so um, they're not going to get sued if somebody eats something that went out a day a day before the expiry date and then sued the company, which I imagine does happen. So for that reason, lots of manufacturers put a shorter than needed expiry date on the filters to definitely cover themselves, and just that for that reason, you know that's why health and safety bureaus and all of those. Uh, are very strict on using the filters within their expiry dates because if you use one that's out the expiry date and something happens to the worker there's going to be lots of suing involved. 
Now, another important factor is temperature and humidity. If you have a very humid area, filters expire faster, and if you're exposing filters to extreme temperatures, filters expire faster. Now, this is primarily when they're opened and they're being, you know, breathed through. However, if you have stored filters, I imagine them being, um, you know, exposed to extreme temperatures and humidity is going to have an effect on it, especially if it's not sealed very well. So this is again part of the problem. If you had a filter that's plugged at both ends and in a you know vacuum packed foil bag um, that's properly sealed, I imagine if it's only regular organic vapor charcoal filters that they would last almost infinitely. Yes, because you know it's stored properly and it's something very very basic inside. However, military filters, as I've said, are not this. So if you have a surplus filter, that's especially the ones you can't even check if they've been opened before, where it's just a plug at each end like a GP5 filter, um, you know, you have no guarantee whatsoever that's going to work. Now, some filters like the Israeli ones are better, where they've got like a security tape over the um, bits so you can see if they've been tampered with or whatever. But they're still not wrapped in foil bags. They're basically just plugged at both ends. So you kind of have to wonder, you know, is this a guarantee that the actual filter is totally airtight? Because I'm sure you know as well, if you got a pin and poked it through the plastic bit at the bottom of an Israeli filter, um, air could come into the filter even if it looks like it's fully sealed, and there's no warning against that unless you look really, really carefully at the filter. Um, so for these reasons, this is what I'm sort of trying to get at. That if you have second-hand, although you know, unopened filters allegedly, that are surplus. You don't know what conditions they've been stored in, you don't know if they've been tampered with, if they've been dropped, even things like that, which could damage the inside of the filter. So I'm sure you know if you get a tear on the inside of the filter, it's not going to work effectively. You've got all these factors that will influence how fast the charcoal in the filter will degrade and things like this. And you'll see, if it's a military filter like an Israeli Type 80 filter, um, and that's got the, it's definitely either ABE, I'm not sure if it's full ABEC, but that will have impregnation because it's for B and E series of vapour. So if you've got a military filter essentially like that, I know the Type 80 is handed to civilians, but it's the all-round filter. Um, if you've got a filter like that and it's got the impregnations in, it's not actually, you know, going to last forever regardless of how well it's sealed. And now we're assuming that, you know, these filters aren't totally vacuum wrapped and everything else. You are really taking a gamble if you buy an out-of-date one and then, you know, risk your life on it in the future. And as I've said, um, I've got plenty of out-of-date filters that have still worked, but I've also had out-of-date filters I've opened and basic organic vapour gets through. So you know something's really gone wrong with the filter. And I would guess with some of those, it's just because the seals on the filter are not good enough. They're good enough to last, you know, five years or whatever. But as time goes on, the actual seals themselves degrade, air can get into the filter, you don't know how they've been stored again if they're surplus. And then, you know, that's it. And as I said, lots of filters you can't eat, don't even have security stuff on, unfortunately, to tell you if somebody's opened and closed the filter. Because if somebody's opened the filter, a contaminant's got in, and then they've closed it immediately again, the filter could still be degraded to the point that when you come to use it, it doesn't work. So anyway, this is going to be my video where I've basically summed up why, you know, it's a bit of a crapshoot buying expired filters, and that filters definitely do expire. Uh, I'm sure other people have actually covered this before, but you know, it's just one of those things I wanted to get out there because apparently I've been accused again of just making up that filters expire. So all of the, you know, safety boards and manufacturers put expiry dates on the filters. If you're being cynical, you could say that is just to totally cover themselves or that they want to make more money. So every five years, you know, they say your filter's expired, you need to buy new ones. And I think you could make a good argument for that. That's definitely part of it. But there is obviously lots of evidence that filters expire. There's also a thing called the burden of proof. So if we've got all this evidence that filters do indeed expire, you're going to have to actually come up with evidence if you want to argue. Otherwise, you can't just say... No, you need to keep getting more and more sources to say uh, that filters expire because charcoal doesn't expire. Like, companies like Brita basically say their filters do last indefinitely, and indefinitely doesn't mean the same thing as infinitely, as I've said before. Indefinitely means that a filter um, is going to last a very long time, but you don't know exactly when it's going to expire. Infinitely means it would last absolutely forever. So even things like Brita with their sort of sealed charcoal filters for water say, you know, the filter is sealed lasts indefinitely but that's not an actual time frame. So, this is the thing to bear in mind. Yes, I do think lots of charcoal filters last indefinitely, but you can't say how long. They definitely do if sealed properly last longer than the expiry date, so I'm not doubting that. But here's the thing, as I've said before, if your life is on the line and you really need a filter, 
is it worth really cheaping out on the filter or do you get one that's still in date and properly sealed and then you know rely on that for training purposes of course yes get filters that are expired or you know sealed properly if expired but when it really comes down to it I think most people would agree that if you're buying a filter for yourself and loved ones in an actual survival scenario you want something in date you can cheap out on the mask a bit because as long as the rubber seals and everything you know are visually fine on the mask and you've done pressure checks and tests with other filters on the mask you can know you know the masks working however when it comes to actually using a filter that you're going to you know basically rely on for your life I personally would always um, use an in-date filter for that and then you know use my expired filters for testing stuff and training I mean it's totally up to you but I think I've given you some pretty good evidence in this video what I'm going to try and do is when I write out the video description as well below I am going to try and put links to all these PDFs and everything I've used so you can actually read through them all at your leisure as well and see that I've not just been like photoshopping images or something to support my argument but there you go